You're listening to the Law of Attraction Radio Network. International success coach and noted author, Constance Arnold, delivers life-changing strategies through her own spiritual practices, as well as with best-selling authors and experts that she interviews. Think, Believe, and Manifest is specially designed to empower your mind and words to work for you and to bring about a life you've been dreaming of. And now, here's Constance Arnold. everyone and welcome to the Law of Attraction Radio Network and of course I am Constance Arnold host of the Think Believe and Manifest talk show and today I am broadcasting from Hotlanta cause it is really hot from beautiful Atlanta Georgia guess what I'm so grateful that you've joined me from all over the world and you know even before you listen to this recording I believe that the spirit of God has attracted you here so that you can receive those downloads that insight that revelation that one aha moment and that your life will never ever be the same again. Well, how are you doing? I'm going to say good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whatever time you're listening to this recording, it is the right time for you. Well, as I said at the beginning of the show, I am broadcasting from Hotlanta and baby is it hot. It has been like 97 to 100 degrees here in the ATL. And I think we're just a couple of weeks away from fall, but guess what? It's all good. Oh boy, do I have a great show for you today. You're going to be just so changed. My very special guest is uh, Susan Shearer Young, and uh, she's the author of How to Allow. We're going to be talking about how to let life happen for you, not to you anybody interested in the house i know i am so let's uh let me give you some quick announcements you know last week i just felt led of the spirit to talk about my couples coaching or the fact that i was a marriage and family therapist but i rarely talk about that and i got such a huge response i want to reiterate it again and you know the stats are that people who've been married for 20 years or longer are getting a uh, divorce at just an astounding rate and, and and why is that um you know because you know they grow apart or there's just not a, a connection anymore uh, some people want more out of life. Uh, you know, maybe you don't have the same interest. You might be an empty, empty, I got that out, empty nester. And you knew all along that something was missing in the relationship. But now that the kids are gone, you know, it's just really like in your face. Uh, maybe a lack of communication. And maybe you have one partner who just does not want to change. He or she is just fine with who they are and where they are. And all of y'all know the only person that you can change is yourself. And this is what I say, whether you're married or you're in a committed relationship, you know, when you change, the relationship will change. So three things happen. You'll change, the relationship will change, or your partner will see your change and they will want to change. And so instead of just sort of sitting around, not really living your full life, you know, not really being who you are, I strongly in- encourage couples, you know, if one person wants to get counseling or coaching, then do that. So I'm going to be offering that. And so this is what I would suggest. Maybe purchase one session. Let's talk. See where you are. I'm certainly not an advocate for divorce. You know, I, I say that people have to work it out if they can. But I've just seen so many people so unhappy in their marriages. And one lady has allowed me to share this. I worked with her years ago. She and her husband retired. He didn't want to change. He just wanted to sit around the house. And she was nagging, making him listen to podcasts. 
y'all stop that ladies giving him books to read and he felt like this is who I am and you're trying to change me so I coached her and I said what do you like to do she had to really rediscover that because she forgot that her whole life was so enmeshed with her husband and so she began to take dance classes now she's 60 something uh just as cute as a button uh she began to take dance classes and then she became a part of a women's group and then she started teaching exercise classes. So what was she doing? She was getting her focus off of what her husband wasn't doing on to how can I, if I choose to stay in this marriage, create the best life for me? Her husband didn't change initially for a couple of years, but she had such a happy, fulfilling, connected life outside of the marriage. When she came home, she wasn't looking for him to meet all of her needs. But eventually he said, hey, my wife is happy. Uh, She has all of these friends. I'm just sitting at home. And he eventually changed. Now, sometimes that happened and sometimes that does not happen. But the gist of what I'm saying is that you deserve to be happy and live a fulfilled life. And so if you're interested in working on yourself, which will uh, in some way impact your marriage, email me at Constance at Fulfilling Your Purpose and uh, let's talk about it. And then lastly, you guys remember to visit me on social media. It's LOA Constance. That is for Twitter and for Instagram. (laughs) It took me a second to remember that. And then Facebook is Coach with Constance. Go to my YouTube channel, Constance Arnold, and subscribe. But this is the the exciting news that I want to tell you before we get to Susan. I am offering once again my one-day VIP coaching intensive with me here in the ATL. So what would it be like for you to spend an entire day day with me, just me and you. You have all of my attention. Uh, It's going to be intensive, but it's going to be wonderful. It's going to be a life-changing day for you to receive just my face-to-face signature coaching. And I'm going I'm going to be having those one on one intensive in a very luxurious country club setting. We will have a a room all to ourselves and it will be just a really safe environment for you to begin to kind of share your fears and your heart's desires. So so can you imagine this? Here we go. You and I, we're, we're working all day long. You're going to be able to get a clear vision of what you want. You rewrite a different story about your life. I'm going to be helping you to design specific plans and strategies according to your lifestyle. I'm going to give you specific action tools, etc. And then you're going to leave with a six-month plan of how to's so it's just me and you baby and depending on who you are of course is going to be custom and tailored specifically specifically for you I may bringing a surprise guest you never know who is going to be that will spend an hour with you so if you're really interested and you're serious about the investment send me an email and we can do a discovery call or you could go on my website fulfilling your purpose.com and just take a look at some more details and would love to meet you in the ATL. What about my international listeners? Well, you can do the same. Uh, We can work together for one day via Skype or Zoom and you can receive that same one day VIP coaching intensive. It's something else and uh, when I've done it in the past, people have really left changed. And that's what it's all about uh, for me. You know, it's something very powerful about 
um, when you meet somebody in person, the energy and the spirit and the connection is just awesome. So check it out, guys, fulfillingyourpurpose.com. That is it. We're going to go to these quick commercials and then I'm going to be right back because I want to learn and hear what Susan has to say. She's really smart. She graduated from Harvard and is a, a she was a, a, an attorney, but uh, now she is called to do this work. So we're going to learn how we can begin to let life happen for us and not to us. So stay tuned, everybody. Do you have an upcoming event where you need a dynamic speaker? Constance Arnold is a sought-after keynote speaker that will enlighten the entire audience with proven strategies that are aligned with your organization's vision and mission. An experienced speaker for major Fortune 500 companies, Constance has entertained audiences with inspiring change. Constance would love to make your next event an extraordinary success. Contact her today at Constance at FulfillingYourPurpose.com. For the past 30 years, Constance Arnold has coached clients globally in the areas of relationships, wealth, and career. Her vast clinical background gives her extraordinary understanding of human behavior to accelerate manifestation. Every coaching client receives proven action plans to create change from the inside out. Constance will be right by your side. Talk to her today at Constance at FulfillingYourPurpose.com. Well, everybody, I am back. And uh, as I said earlier, I'm really excited about my very special guest. My very special guest is Susan Shearer Young. She's a recognized life coach and an author, and she loves focusing in on helping her clients to transform their lives from the their inner game. We all know that it it is an inside job. She's really smart, guys. She's a graduate of the University of Virginia and Harvard Law School. She formerly uh, was a corporate attorney and she discovered that, wow, this isn't what I really want to do. I'm born for uh, something more passionate where I can serve people. And then she became the author of How to Allow, Working with the Law of Attraction to Allow Your Natural Well-Being. It's a great book. And as a matter of fact, the book has been recognized as Best of Books on the Law of Attraction for 2012 and was also chosen as a nominee for Best of Books on the Law of Attraction for 2015. Um, she is really smart and I love the way that she just breaks down the Law of Attraction. And so... I just felt led by the spirit to reach out to her. She has not been on the show since 2012. We're going to check out what's going on with her. Susan Young, welcome back to the Law of Attraction Radio Network. Oh, thank you, Constance. That was a beautiful introduction, <laughs> and I appreciate it. it. It's been a long time, and a lot of things have happened, and uh, the book still remains as solid for me as it ever was. I still use the techniques myself. Uh, when I'm feeling like I need to improve my vibration and I use it with my coaching clients, but there are, there are new things. The leading edge keeps changing yeah. as time goes by. And, um, you know, I'd love to share some of that. And I, I guess one thing, um, well, but, but, but before we get started, I want to read yeah. something that okay. one, uh, one of your book reviews from Amazon, is it from Amazon? And, and this person said, Oh, Everything in this book meshes so well, talking about Susan's book, so well with what I've come to learn about the law of attraction. Follow the book to a T and you'll be surprised at how your life changes. This person says, I've used the same techniques to manifest promotion at a job, a six figure salary and much more money. My life is completely different as a result of the step that uh, he found in your book, Susan. So he said, I'll admit, he or she, I'll admit that I 
did not originally learn from this book. My road to learning this process was much harder and fraught with trial and error. Can anybody relate to that? And mm-hmm. lots of hits and misses. And then this person says, do yourself a favor. Skip that journey and just do what the book says. It works. So so that's just one example of a review uh, from your book. And, and so, Susan, you know, you're so smart and you have such a great way of really breaking things down. So what we're going to do today is just kind of give the listeners a summary of, of how to allow. And mm-hmm. then we're going to talk about some new stuff that you've learned over these What's 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19? I'm counting on my fingers. Uh, uh, <laughs> seven, yes. seven years. Wow, I can't believe it's been that long. It it's doesn't been... feel like it's been that long. But yeah. yes, I thank you for sharing that review. I When I saw that on Amazon, I thought, wow, I would love to know who that is because it was such a perfect, uh, perfect review in terms of saying this process is simple and save yourself the time and you don't have to make it complicated. That, well, that's what I especially loved about that review in particular, because my whole mission when I wrote How to Allow was, I really want to get this out there. I, this is so empowering. If people could know that they really are creating their realities by the thoughts they have in their heads, the visions in their heads, and then the you know the actions they take, whether they're in support of those thoughts and visions or not, or contradictory, that, that, that we're really creating it all. I thought that is so empowering. That's the most important thing that I could teach people. It's like teaching people how to fish rather than giving them fish. So that was my mission. And I very deliberately tried to take concepts that you can make them kind of esoteric and complicated, but they don't need to be. And I think part of the, you know, we're trained to work really hard and achieve and succeed We think we have to do a lot of processes for things to work. And I came to realize after that same trial and error that that reviewer mentioned that um, it doesn't have to be as complicated. In fact, when you break it down and make it simpler, it it really just does work. It is. So, yes. And what I I think I'm pretty sure most of the listeners to this podcast interview and already are pretty familiar with law of attraction, but I feel like it's important to just break it down really quickly to make sure we're all on the same page. Um, Let me say something there because, mm-hmm. you know, Susan, you could hear something, you know, I've heard something sometimes maybe a hundred times and then Uh-oh. somebody else shares it and then you're like, I got it. Uh-oh. So, you know, me just too. to hear something over and over again for listeners, I feel is really important. Uh, You know, I agree with you. And I've had that same experience. Like I've listened to something that I thought was really, you know, oh, wow. Wow, Yeah, this is this is great information. I get this. I listened to it again two years later. And I'm like, wait, was that in there? (laughs) I I didn't hear that. Right. And there's it's like I'm on a different level when I listen to it the second time. And I get a lot of different things out of it. And I think, um, as as you said, re, you know, just sort of refreshing your mind about how law of attraction works. Sometimes it can be like, well, you know, I've always thought I understood how it worked, but really, oh, it actually is that simple. Uh-huh. So the the allowing part of it is really our only work. And that's that was my impetus in writing the book is really just to explain that, you know, that the way that the law of attraction is working, whether we're aware of it or not. A lot of people, um, you know, I'll get questions or I'll see things written about, you know, how to um, get the law of attraction to do different things, how to do that. But it's really the law of attraction is already operating. It's on its own. That is the way energy works in our world. And we don't have to do anything actively to put out to the universe or source or God or infinite intelligence, whatever we want to call it, uh, what we'd like to create in our lives. That happens automatically, whether we're even aware of it or not, by just thinking. So if we're thinking, yeah, uh, gee, you know, I I like this job, but it would be a little bit better if I had this job or if my hours were a little bit shorter. Or you just start to have preferences for things that could be different. You think about improvements you'd like to have in your relationship or 
improvements in your lifestyle or your bank balance. And by just thinking about it, it's being conveyed to the universe or Ugh. God or source. It, it's out there. You, you, we really, we, praying is wonderful and I pray. Um, and everybody has, you know, there are so many different ways you can do this, you know, do that. Um, you can be asking, you can be on your knees, you can be thanking. That's something I almost, that, that's sort of my go-to move. I thank God, the universe source in advance by saying, thank you for this, you know, the particular thing that I want at the time rather than asking for it. But we don't even have to do that. We're already asking by just thinking about it and expressing a preference in our mind. And then the thing that I think. Oh, okay, let, let me yeah. stay. Let me. Sure, sure, that's sure. so profound. Thank so we all the listeners are already creating just by thinking a certain way. Correct. 24-7. 24-7. So, mm-hmm. when, you know, that can feel really great or really scary. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I'm trying to make it feel a little more empowering and Uh not scary because when you first realize that you have that power, that you are, by putting your thoughts out there, that is what's showing up in your reality. It feels amazing and awesome and like, oh my God, I'm, I'm in control. I have freedom. But then it can be, oh my God, but then great responsibility comes with that because I'm not so good about thinking really good thoughts all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, for for 20 years, I've been thinking, you know, uh, thoughts that are very negative. That's how my family was, or uh, that's what I was taught. That's the way I grew up. And but the, the nice thing to know is that positive energy, the energy of the universe and source energy, the energy of our inner being is exponentially more powerful than those little random negative thoughts that we throw out every now and then in response to certain situations. So we don't have to counteract 20 years of negative thinking with 20 years of positive thinking to begin to create what we want. Really just focusing for about a minute in a positive way really starts to set the wheels in motion that you begin creating positively and one thing that I think is very cool that just came to mind is that it, sometimes when we've had a lot of negative thinking going on and we had, we've put we've been asking a lot, but we've been contradicting it with negative energy. When we do make that shift to positive energy, it's almost like we get a huge bounce because we've asked so much. Right. That there is this huge escrow out there. It's like an escrow account full of everything we've asked for. And it's just been waiting for us to line up with it. So even a small effort to start thinking more positively, like one thing that I have clients do sometimes is is to keep a notebook of positive aspects, I call it, and having on each page of their little notebook, uh, a person, a situation, you know, could be work, my family, my kids, my spouse, my, you know, uh, my spirituality, whatever it might be, and just everything about it that's positive, doing something like that for about a week, and you've completely shifted your momentum. So Powerful. Yeah, so just throwing that out there. But to, just to continue um, this whole discussion of how this, just the process works generally, when we, you know, just by thinking, we put it out there, and the thing that I think is incredibly wonderful and that creates a real feeling of appreciation for me and I think the feeling of appreciation is one of the highest vibrations we can have is that the universe, God, source energy, our inner being, our soul, whatever we want, infinite intelligence, it responds to every one of our requests. And that's a beautiful thing. <coughs> Excuse me. Expound on that. So yeah, cause a, a lot of people say that I prayed, but didn't anything happen? I, I believed, know. but didn't anything happen? And that's the situation where that I talk about a lot in my book. um, And that's what I try to get people to really understand. Mm -hmm. You can think that you are praying, asking, and, and you are, but the vibration you're putting out there is, oh, dear God, oh, somebody, this hasn't been working for me. It's Mm -hmm. been so long. It's been so hard. Why can't I have it? Please, please Mm -hmm. make this better. And that is not the energy that's lined up with the thing that they want mm. it's it's the energy of i don't have it and i need it rather than i've got it <clears throat> and so that's the tricky part here yeah. it doesn't have to be tricky but it's almost uh, i think in my book i call it the catch 22 of the law of attraction or deliberate creation is that the way to line up your energy 
with what the universe has created for you in that vibrational escrow is you need to feel in a, on the, the same bandwidth or the same vibration of the thing that you want. So you have to feel like you think you're going to feel when you get it before you get it. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. Yeah. And, and so for listeners, it, it starts with just thinking But then let's just say they're thinking, I desire more abundance, but they need to put feeling behind that thinking as they begin to think that for one minute or two minutes or three minutes. Mm -hmm. And a feeling of hopefulness and that it's Mm -hmm. possible. That is a that is really kind of the foundation of how to allow the book is teaching people how to go from feeling, oh gosh, I don't have enough money in my bank account and how am I going to get that? And thinking that they are asking the universe for it and that and they're trying to line up for, with it, but they don't know how to. And they're really putting out the vibration of, I don't have any money. I don't have any money. How am I going to get any money? How am I going to do it? I don't see how that's going to happen. You need to get yourself more into a place where you actually believe it's possible mm. and you you start to, you intend it and you start to expect it. So you need to build a foundation to get to a place where when you think about this thing that you want, you can actually think about it as if, yeah, it's coming in for me because I have I have a decent vibration going. I'm in alignment on a lot of subjects. I might not be perfect on the subject of money. That's always been a hard one for me. But I love my husband or my wife or my boyfriend or my my kids or my dog and I'm I'm a good person. I'm kind to other people. I appreciate my house. I love my job. I get a lot of appreciation at work. You can get yourself into that really high vibration on other subjects that aren't as tricky for you. And that will also cause you say, you know, I was using money as an example because that seems to be a thorny issue for lots right. of people. And you, but you don't have to necessarily be in the perfect vibe on that subject. You raise your vibe on one subject and it's almost like, you know, the cork rises to the top. It's you raise your vibe on everything. Oh, so, that's good. Good. I'm glad. I'm glad that made that made sense. And mm-hmm. I guess so step three in this whole law of attraction process is the allowing part of it. And that's what I'm talking about here. It's that the, the concept that well-being is the way it's supposed to be. Allowing is letting what happens, what should happen, happen naturally if we weren't doing something to interfere with it, like thinking negative thoughts or feeling like it wasn't possible, you know, in they, it's in the, most of the material on law of attraction, it's called resistance. It, mm-hmm. and it, it, um, it's really just doing what, if we weren't doing that, it would be coming into our lives naturally. And isn't that sort of a simple way to think yeah, about it? Yeah, that is. I lo- so if we were not thinking negatively or feeling negatively, well-being would just flow naturally through our lives. Yes, that that is, I've really come to understand that. I know it. I've experienced it. I've seen the difference between having a vibration that is on the, you know, on the same wavelength as my desires. And I've seen this with clients versus having the one that is saying, why, why, why hasn't it happened yet? And this is so overwhelming. I can't do it. And there's in what shows up in your life from one vantage point versus the other. And it's, it's, it's game changing if you can get yourself into that place. So kind of the whole preference of uh, the um, premise of how to allow rather is that you need to decide and make a commitment, not like I'm going to just try to do this, sort of like I'm going to try to lose 10 pounds versus I'm going to lose 10 pounds. You're mm-hmm. going, you know, I ask people to commit to I'm going to choose the best thoughts that I can whenever I can. Whenever I notice myself thinking in a way that doesn't feel good, I'm going to make an effort to shift to a better perspective. And that um, idea of feeling good, I think it's it's called your emotional guidance system. It tells you where your vibration is on any particular subject. If you're feeling depressed, you're way, way down there vibrationally. That's kind of bottom of the emotional scale. Angry, funnily enough, is is a little bit above that because you feel more in control, like you have a little more power. Um, then you could move into frustrated. It's not great, but it's a lot better than depressed or angry. 
And then you could move into being overwhelmed, which that's not so bad. You could go from overwhelmed to, hmm, actually, I think that could work out. That's hopeful. Mm -hmm. And when you, you know, it's like you can't jump immediately from rage or depression or, you know, total despair up to feeling joy. But you can work your way up the scale by just choosing to think about the whole thing a little bit differently. And that's the big part of this, what I call the daily tool that I have in how to allow. It helps people to work through those layers. And I give lots of examples of different situations you could be in and how you could talk yourself into a place where you actually feel like it's possible to get what you want. Not that it's just possible that you're likely to get it. And I give a lot of illustrative stories about things in in my life or people that I've worked with where you just surprise yourself. You're in a good vibe. And someone, I think I I told a story where I walked into a department store and they were handing out these little $15 coupons at Christmas time for when you spent a certain amount, you got those, you know, that you could apply toward the next purchase. And I had been Christmas shopping and I had bought some things for my daughter. So I was, there was a, I was going to get like, I think three of those little what what are the little coupons or whatever they called them. And I went up to the table to pick mine up and this woman working there, she said, you know what, I'm going to give you this instead. And she hands me a $200 gift certificate. Wow. Yeah, it was nice. It was very nice. That, that and, was nice. And, and so really we're talking to listeners about when you allow you learning to let life happen for you, not to you. Exactly. That is mm-hmm. my credo. I, I mean, I think... It's, it's taking charge of, you know, taking the reins of your life into your own hands. So it's, it's all about our vibration, which is the thoughts in our heads, the visions in our heads, and then the actions that we're taking and whether those are also lined up with, you know, the, the vision that we have in our heads. Because sometimes I think we can contradict our energy by taking actions that aren't actually supportive of what we want. And that, that, definitely contradicts our vibration and we don't even realize we're doing it. So there's a lot of paying attention involved and checking in with, you know, I was calling it your emotional guidance system. How am I feeling right now? If I'm feeling frustrated, what could I do to change that? And one thing that I I think is really helpful is to know whenever we find ourselves experiencing the negative emotion is to realize that that means our inner being or source or the universe isn't agreeing with us at the time. Do you, don't you love that? You know, I I agree with that. I had a friend this week and she was sitting in traffic and, and, um, and Atlanta traffic is, it can be something else. And so um, she said she started to complain and she had her radio on and they were talking about the people in the Bahamas Oh, yes. <laughs> and how they didn't have a place to let, you know, they've been displaced and how she heard a, an interview and the lady said, I don't know what I'm going to do. And she said in that moment, she made a decision to be grateful. And she, and, and she said, I decided that I was going to let life happen for me, not to me. I, oh, I'm not wow. I'm, I'm not going to. Yeah, that's what she said. I'm like, wow. OK. And so she said, because if I'm focusing in on the traffic, then I'm letting life happen to me. But if I just think about it, I'm in a car, I have a home, you know, yes. I have children, I have electricity, I have air. And so that's for listeners. It's a choice, you know, just learning to let life happen for you and not to you. Oh, yes. I actually had that quotation on my website and on mm-hmm. some other places that I post, because I think that is what this is all about. It's, it's taking, you know, feeling that sense of control, it's empowerment, it's freedom. And uh, that's what sort of led me to want to do this work. It's like we can have control over our own lives. It's so refreshing. And I think, you know, a lot of things that are going on in the world right now that feel a little bit like, whoa, this is just crazy. So many people are disagreeing on everything. And I think a lot of it stems whether whatever side of any issue you're on is people not feeling that they have freedom and control. And so this true. is, yes. And this is the antidote to that really, because we have total control. We just need to embrace it instead of being afraid of it and say, I can do this. I'm I'm committing to choosing the best thoughts that I can whenever I can. And I do want to sort of qualify that 
slightly because that is still that remains true. That is the foundation of the book, How to Allow Everything that I write about, the whole concept of the law of attraction. But there has been, I would say, a development over the, what did we say? It's been seven years. Uh -huh, since, seven yes, years. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's something that I've learned in my own life and working with clients and just more things that I've been exposed to. Because I think things do keep changing as more of us raise our consciousness and learn more things be you know things that weren't obvious before become obvious and one of the things that i feel is is very powerful and important is that while we're committing to choosing the best thoughts we can whenever we can that we don't get into this situation where when we experience we find ourselves having a negative thought or negative emotion we go oh no oh dummy there you go again okay <laughs> you know uh oh you did it again there you go thinking negatively Rather just saying, hey, I'm becoming more sensitive to my, my emotions, and that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. And give yourself a little pat on the back, because right, right then, you have shifted your momentum into something more positive, and you're going to start attracting more positive thoughts. And if, think about it. If the minute you say, oh, gosh, there you go again, you know, yeah, you, you have, you're back to negative thinking again, you're going to attract more thoughts that match that. So the thoughts are all out there. You've put them out there, others have put them out there, and you're on the bandwidth of some murky stuff that you don't really want. So step one, if you find yourself experiencing negative emotion, is say, good that I see that now. I'm getting better and better at noticing when I'm doing that, and that's okay. And the second big takeaway that I have learned is that we don't want to get into this posture where we think, oh, no, uh, cancel that thought. I got to suck that one back in. You know, I don't, you know, I'm, I'm thinking negatively and that's, that's, you know, that's terrible. I'm, I'm going to create something negative in my experience because there really is a buffer of time that gives us a chance to change the way we're thinking. Things don't manifest instantly for the most part. I mean, that hardly ever happens. There is a buffer of time. And the, the thing that I think is the big reveal that I've learned is that processing that negative emotion is really important it's not a good idea to think, oh, my God, I've, I've got to get into positive thinking. I, I, you know, I committed to that, so I'm not going to let myself think about this negative situ this situation in this negative manner anymore. I'm going to I'm going to shift right now because that doesn't really work. What you need to do is acknowledge the negative emotion, pat yourself on the back for noticing it and not deny it, not bury it, realize that when we feel it and process it on purpose like that, that's not attracting negatively. And that's a really big distinction there. It is. Because I used to think when I first started learning about this, that if I let myself, you know, I was feeling sad about something or upset about something that if I let myself feel it for too long, well, then I'm just going to attract a bunch of, you know, murky things and things that I don't want. And we don't want to get into, you know, a, a pity party and wallowing in it. But it's really important to let ourselves feel it and purposely feel it. And when we're doing it on purpose with the knowledge that we're doing it, we're not attracting negative things. We're saying, you know, I realize I'm feeling this. I realize my source energy, the universe, God doesn't agree with me. And I know that I can find a different perspective on this. I'm going to let myself feel it, acknowledge it, and I'm accepting that it's okay and that I can find a better perspective. That's and, good because yeah. a lot of people feel like, oh, my God, I've got to go back and and um, dig up all of those negative thoughts and emotions that I had. And, yeah. and, and, and so that's that's new and leading edge. What else have you a discovery or what else is going on in the whole law of attraction, quantum physics world that you could share with listeners? Oh, well, the other thing that I think is really awesome, actually, and I wrote a post about this. If you go to my website, which is howtoallow.net, I have about 200 blog posts, I think. I'm, I have a lot of really good information out there, but in the, this is one of the most recent posts that where I discuss how energy is speeding up now. Mm. And things are happening more quickly. And even though I, I was just mentioning, you don't have to worry about, there is a buffer of time. You don't have to worry about having a negative thought and immediately having something negative show up. It, it's not like that, but 
we do have the power with our positive emotion, positive thoughts to manifest things more quickly. And I have definitely seen evidence of that um, with just putting a thought out there. Like, hmm, that might be fun to do that. And within the day, I get an email that suggest, you know, that's re- responsive, that it's the opportunity that I was thinking about. It's, it's almost crazy, but, um, energy is, is really moving more quickly. And I think you and I, before, uh, our interview today, we were talking about that a little right. bit and, and what is, what is the basis for that? And, you know, people's consciousness is changing. Yeah. And- well, you know, in the whole Christian faith realm, what people are saying now is that, Faith, if you're in faith or if you're believing for something and you're in the eternal now, that faith is compressing time because faith um, doesn't even have any recognition of time. Faith says, I have it now. It's mine now. And so if you're in faith or believing for something and you're saying right now, I have I have my new car and I thank the universe. I thank God for it. That because faith compresses and dismantles time, then whatever you desire is accelerate, accelerated and comes to you, you know, on the physical plane of your being. And so yes. I, I, I love that because faith is a force, it's a power. And so if your intention is, let's just say hypothetically, uh, you know, I, I want an extra $500 a month and uh, you begin to say thank you and you start thinking about it, like Susan said, it's mine now uh, and begin to just develop more positive thoughts toward that and you're in the eternal now because eternity is really now and so Mm -hmm. and you have faith for it faith says we don't have to wait 20 months to get that it compresses time it 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 diminishes time and you have it now so that's what's going on in the christian faith world and so it aligns just uh perfectly with what you said susan Oh, I love that way of expressing it because mm-hmm. it's true. Because it, there, another way of looking at that is faith it has its own vibration yeah. as well. Mm-hmm. It's up there on the let when we're talking about the high flying vibrations that are a match to our desires. Faith is getting right up there with appreciation and love because well, it's, it's a complete belief. And yes, it does compress time. I love putting it that way. So uh, I guess what I was suggesting with this. I, I would like to give people a couple of tools that they okay. can use now that we know that things are moving faster and we can manifest things more quickly. That's great uh, news. Yahoo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. These are, these are easy and quick and I think they work very well and I've had success with them. And I, I definitely suggest these to my coaching clients. And one of the things that you can do is prepave your path to the things that you want by visualizing about them, daydreaming, um, coming up with the plan, just things that, but t- doing it with the light touch so that it mm-hmm. just feels good when you want to man as Constance, I think you were saying the 200 or $500 or whatever, mm-hmm. just thinking, well, that's coming to me. And what, if, if that, if I knew that that was happening, how would I be acting right now? I call that acting as if, okay. as if it's already happened. So that visualizing and daydreaming and acting in accordance with it, it helps to keep that momentum going and you're riding the crest of that, that speedy momentum that we've got going now. The second thing, and now this almost seems counterintuitive because we're saying energy is moving faster, but what we need to do is slow down a little bit at the same time and make sure that we notice how we're feeling more Mm -hmm. often because energy is moving so fast. We want to make sure that the way we're thinking and what we're doing, the actions we're taking are, compatible with what we want and that we're focusing forward on those things. So energy is moving faster. We want to prepave, just uh, get out in front of it by thinking and doing a little planning and making sure our actions are in accordance with it. And then we went at the same time, slow down occasionally and just check in with ourselves and say, well, how, how am I feeling? What am I thinking about? And just noticing whether we're lined up with what we want. I actually just wrote a, um, another blog post on my howtoallow.net about um, sometimes we contradict ourselves 
by taking actions that aren't actually lined up with the thing that we want. And I think I called it uh, something along the lines, well, if you're expecting the best, you should also prepare for the best because a lot of us were trained that the way we should approach life, especially some of us who have been trained to be hardworking and mm -hmm. achievement oriented and all that is expect the best, but prepare for the worst so that that way you're covered because you've, you've got it covered. You, you know, you, every eventuality is covered. And I, that actually doesn't make a lot of sense vibrationally because we're contradicting our energy by putting some, you know, think what's really underlying is that is we think there's a pretty good chance it's not going to happen the way we want it to or we wouldn't be preparing for the worst. So, you know, in my post, I was saying, if expect the best and also be preparing for the best. So that's another thing I would do to take advantage of this faster moving energy. And the third thing, which I think for some people, it might seem like, Ooh, that one's a little, that's a little tricky for me, <laughs> um, is letting go of the past as, as much as possible oh, because yeah. the, the energy is moving fast. We got to take advantage of it. We want to use that and, you know, really have the joyful lives we were meant to have. And it just means being more forward focused because whenever we're looking back on things, most of us have at least a few things that have happened that we're thinking, oh God, if that hadn't happened, hmm, I wouldn't be. You know, <laughs> Where would that this, be? <laughs> yeah, this, I would have this now and I would have that now. And despite the fact that things may be going relatively well for us right now and that we're manifesting some good things, some things in our lives are working we still tend to reflect back on those things that happened that weren't so good. And it's just, it's so counterproductive because it's, it's not relevant anymore when the energy is moving this quickly. And we know so much more now than we knew when that thing happened or the things that we're regretting or that we wish we had done a little differently. Um, it's kind of, it feels a little ridiculous if you think about it to let those let the past dictate our mood now, our goals, our expectations. It's like not honoring ourselves as spiritual beings. So I think letting the past be past is a great goal. I love that. Let me inject something here quickly, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and, and you know, and it's so true, Susan, because a lot of people, I, I was working with somebody and they were saying like, wow, I really want love. But then they they had not gotten over the past relationship and didn't trust me. Mm -hmm. and, and so I believe in, in, in dealing with your past. I always say, if you don't deal with your stuff, your stuff deals with you. If you don't deal with your past, your past mm -hmm. deals with you. So I believe in taking a look at it. We, we peek at it. I always say, we're going to open the door, peep our head in it, peep out, peep our head in we're not going to bring a suitcase. A, uh, <laughs> we're not bringing anything. We're just peeping in to look at that past. And then we're going to identify what it is, how it's been hindering and slowing us down. We're going to gain from our past because you should never let your past or any circumstance take from you. You're going to gain from it. You're going to peep around to see if there's anything else in there. And we're going to shut the door. Oh, I love that. And, I and love then not we're bringing gonna, a suitcase. <laughs> don't, we're not bringing a suitcase, uh, uh, a backpack. We're not bringing nothing. You no. know, and, and we're so taking a peek. We're taking a peep. And so why are we doing that? Because we want to be in that accelerated manifestation that the spirit has going on right now. Oh, I love the way you express that. And mm -hmm. I, I'm going to keep that in my repertoire, not bring a suitcase, because I do not believe in bringing a suitcase. I do believe in acknowledging it. It's sort of like we were talking about before when you're experiencing negative emotion. Maybe it does involve reflecting on something that happened in the past that you're still not quite over, but just looking at it and taking a peek, as you said, and then deciding, you know, how much longer am I willing to suffer about that? How much longer? Wow. You know... I need you for part two. And so we have about 10 minutes exactly. Is there anything else, any other new cutting edge uh, insight that you want to share with the listeners? I want to make sure you have enough time to share about your website. Okay, sure. I, I'll try to be quick on this, but okay. I, I think this is an important topic. And it's it really just flows just exactly from what we we're talking about, about releasing the past so we can take advantage of that fast moving energy right now. Um, one thing that I've learned and I've just experienced this myself, I've experienced this with clients, is when we've had some experiences that may, maybe were particularly challenging, 
um, there is almost always something to be gleaned from them. There mm -hmm. is a silver lining. We might not see it while it's happening, but it's there. And it's sometimes it's something that seemed incredibly challenging at the time. And we look back later and we say, you know what? I would not be the person I am now or have the knowledge I have now, that the strength I have now, if that hadn't happened. And I think sometimes we can feel a little bit better about that by thinking, you know, from a more aerial perspective, my genius perspective of my inner being, I might have orchestrated that to some degree because I came into this life to grow and expand. And if I hadn't had that experience, I wouldn't be this person that I am now who is poised to manifest all these incredible things. And I, I even wrote a post about that and I called it um, something along the lines of even that because most of us have something that we go, wait, even that, they, that was just, that was not good. I, you know, I, that, that, you know, that was, that was difficult. That was hard. But when you look at even that almost always, you can say, oh my God, that, that taught me, that made me strong. That taught me this, that taught me that. And it's made me the deliberate creator that I am now. There's all, you know, always a gem. There is something there you know, you, we never know what, how, what we've put out there is being responded to by the universe. And occasionally it might result in something that seems a little tricky or complicated, but it's actually leading us to our desires. It's so I think so that's good. a really important thing to hold on to. It is. I love that. And so tell people your website, what special mm -hmm. offers do you have, et cetera. We have just a little time. Go ahead. Okay, sure. My website is at it's www.howtoallow.net. And one thing is I'm a prolific uh, blogger. I, that's the way I connect with, you know, my prospective clients and the way I get my voice out into the world. And I really believe people need this information and this is what people are looking for. So I have, you know, a, a wealth of information through my posts. And I also have a, uh, something that I created recently because I realized so many people, one of their, the hindering things that is keeping them from moving forward and they are stuck in place is that they have some limiting beliefs that they're carrying around mm -hmm. about what's possible for them, like what they bring to the table, what they're capable of, what can happen for them. And so I created a guide that's meant to be a simple approach to releasing limiting beliefs. And that is on my website. Again, that's at howtoallow.net. And it's, I think I'm, I called it the uh, 10 minute self-doubt solution because limiting beliefs are really, they are, they do involve self-doubt. And when we can let go of those and transform them, uh, that is what helps us to get unstuck. So I had that on my site as a, something I'm just offering for free and people may download it because I feel like that is one of the biggest stumbling blocks to consciously creating your life. For most people, people are stuck as a result of some story they're telling themselves and a limiting belief that they have. And this just gives you a tool that you can use for any of your limiting beliefs. And it's like a sort of discovery process. It takes you through the different areas of your life and asks you some questions that are going to uh, allow you to unearth what the limiting beliefs are that you're carrying around. So that is, um, that is available at howtoallow.net. And my book is um, How to Allow. It's available on Amazon as well as on my website. And it's available in Kindle or paperback. And you can also get the ebook from my website. Um, I have an audio version that some people prefer because some people just love to listen rather than read. So um, there are many ways that you can get this material. Well, you know, I just want to say to listeners, I'm going to really strongly encourage you to go to her website. As a matter of fact, I received the complimentary, thank you so much, sure. uh, the complimentary ebook on how to rid yourself of self-doubt. Is that what it's called? It's called the 12 minute self-doubt solution. Uh, okay. And it, and it, it, it's really simple. And you see how Susan just breaks things down very detail, but her book, how to allow it, it's so easy. And, you know, just like the review that I read previously, it will add to what you already know about the law of attraction. And I love it, Susan, because it just, I think it's the missing piece of the puzzle for me. 
uh, that will Thank really you. help people to not only allow, but to align with what they desire. Because as I say every week, we know that it is the will of God for you to live uh, an abundant and purposeful life. And I just want to take this time to say thank you, Susan. Oh, I, my I, pleasure. I, I'm probably <laughs> going to have to have you back for part two because uh, so many of my questions you know, I didn't really get an opportunity to answer, but thank you for your work. Guys, visit her website, check out all of her blog posts, and I'm going to go and read them myself. And uh, I just thank God for you. Well, thank you, Constance, for having me. This has really been a pleasure. And um, wow, it, it was a lot of fun to talk to you. And I have definitely could go on with some more cutting edge tools that have, have come yeah, you know, come to light since the book. So we'll have to do it again. Yeah, we'll have to do it again. And I just want to remind everybody that, uh, you know, that Jules has really done a remarkable job on the new law of attraction magazine. Uh, it's absolutely free. So you can just go to LOARadioNetwork.com and you'll see a picture of the magazine and you can just click that, click on that and receive that. I'm going to also strongly encourage you to listen to some of the other hosts on the network. Uh, you know, we have some very interesting hosts. We all have different niches that we really uh, share with people all over the world. And if you have a powerful manifestation story, uh, please email me at Constance at fulfillingyourpurpose.com. I would love for you to come on the air and really share what your manifestation story is. We want to hear how you have been using the law of attraction. I want to hear how the Think, Believe, and Manifest talk show has really impacted, shifted, and changed your life. So you may say, oh, uh, I just manifested something small. Well, you know, uh, it, you may think it's small. Remember the lady who manifested a butterfly and that was like her sign from God that she was supposed to move in a certain direction. So, you know, don't be shy. I would <laughs> love for you to just share with other listeners and why is that important? Because when you share, it really um, emanates faith. You bring hope to the hopeless and uh, plus you're gonna have a great time being on the air with me. So uh, uh, make sure you do that. And uh, as I say every week, and uh, some of you say that my show is a show that really uplifts you. I'm so grateful to God for that. And one lady said, Constance, you're the only person that says, I love you. And so I just want to say that I love all of you. I believe in you. And uh, you may not know it. You may not see it. You may not feel it. Uh, you might be in a difficult place right now, but you are surrounded by a loving and supporting and caring spirit. And that spirit is there to bring to you your highest good. And so I just want you to believe that and to think about that all week long. And um, another thing I want you to think and say is something good is going to happen to me this week and through me. Because remember that we are creating our own reality. We are powerful creators and I'm excited about the miraculous that's going to happen in your life. So all I'm going to say is I'm waiting to receive your email because I know that something great is going to manifest in your life. Have a great week. Be victorious. God bless you. Thank you for listening to Think, Believe, and Manifest. Constance Arnold will be back next week with another great show just for you. For more information, please visit fulfillingyourpurpose.com.